Hi, I'm Michael Smith for uh, Nevada Trails. So I have a very special show. I have an artist named Kilbuck, and he's going to tell me about a, a subject that I've been dying to learn about, uh, Burning Man. Thank you for being on the show, and educate me on Burning Man. It it's almost seems it's I've been here seven years. I've been dying to go, and I just don't, I'm not asking the right questions to get to, to learn about it, I guess. <laughs> so uh, please educate me on what Burning Man well, is. Well, you know, it, it's, uh, it, we have a saying uh, that uh, if, if you've never been to Burning Man, uh, an explanation is pretty much impossible. That's right. If you have been, then an explanation really is not necessary. Uh, it, it's a unique event. Uh, it has quite a bit of worldwide fame. It's also an event that I think is a little bit misunderstood by a lot of people. They don't quite know what it is. It's got a lot of mystery surrounding it. Um, and <clears throat> It's seen as this big party out in the desert, or people think of it as perhaps this sort of uh, pagan, semi-spiritual, religious event, which it is not. Um, like a lot of events uh, that develop over time, a lot of uh, even holidays for that matter, the Burning Man event, the Bur Burning Man project has evolved over the years. Uh, it started off as something very, very simple. Uh, it started off as an event uh, that was more of a social event in San Francisco at Baker Beach uh, back in the 1980s. Uh, and I was living out there at the, at the time, and I kind of heard about these people that were doing these bonfires on the beach, but I had never actually attended any one of these things. Uh, but these, these became uh, gatherings for local artists. They would socialize. They had a big bonfire, and they would eventually start burning things in the, mm -hmm. in, in the fire. And one of the figures that was brought up there was this kind of man effigy, this wooden man effigy, and it was just a wonderful evocative so thing to burn. So it started from like that driftwood, and then, then someone turned into kind of an yeah, art, artistic thing. lumber and things of that nature. That's well, right. When I was and eventually it got so large that they had to leave the Baker Beach and find a new location. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few years later, the Black Rock Desert, uh, 120 miles uh, northwest, uh, or pardon me, northeast of, of Reno was selected in the Black Rock Desert National Conservation Area, part of BLM property. Vast area uh, with limitless opportunities, and uh, the event has grown today to an event that attracts somewhere around 30 to 40,000 people annually. Wow. And uh, is, what, is arguably the world's largest Leave No Trace event as well. Well, when I was a, uh, a kid in 1976, I went to my first big food convention in uh, San Francisco, and I went to Sausalito. And I'd never been around a place with so many artists. Mm -hmm. I was absolute heaven. And so these people from this artist community, this whole area, kind of decided on the Black Rock Desert to create a bigger community of artists to... Mm -hmm. uh, kind of go as a national convention now, or it's a yearly event? Well, Bur Burning Man started off as more of a social event, actually. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm certainly I'm not speaking on, on behalf of the organization. I'm speaking as just a participant. Well, yeah, kill Somebody who's been very interested in the history of the event and as a participant uh, uh, fascinated with how it developed. And from this social event of, uh, you know, artists and creative types and so forth, uh, it, it has developed over time. And over time, uh, the, the focus on art and community has become really the centerpieces of what the event is all about. Um, I think for, for, for myself, those are the two things that keep me going back year after year. I've been going since 2003 and haven't missed a year since. Wow. And it's the, it's the, the, the experimentation community, bringing people together, creating infrastructure, uh, uh, the whole temporary nature of communities, and redefining how those communities work, and doing it in, a, in an extraordinarily creative environment in a place that seems to be like the, like the biggest blank canvas you could ever want to, to, to put one of these things into. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an event that is attracts people from all over the world. Uh, I've met people there from all over Europe and Asia, Africa, Russia, uh, China, England. Well, you name it. Just oh all wow! Of the world. Well, when you go there, you don't use money to exchange for anything. You you do it. You have a barter system. Well, there really isn't a barter system. You trade things. It's, for it's referred to as gift a, a gifting. Economy. Gifting. Oh, okay. So in other words, you you don't buy anything out there. There's nothing for sale. There's no food court, uh, uh, there's no uh, tr trash pickup. You have to bring everything that you need to be able to, to live and survive for anywhere from a few days up to 10, 12 days out in the desert. All your water, all your food, your shade structures, all your infrastructure, everything is on your own. 
in fact, in the, the guide for people coming out uh, that comes with your ticket, it's referred to as the survival guide because it's a very, <laughs> very brutal environment. Well, it's hot. It's very, very and, hot. And uh, I've heard um, people come back, it takes a while to get the powder off their skins because it's, it's really gets, it's kind of a, would you say a gypsum type? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very fine diatomaceous earth, a, 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 a gypsum silt. The Black Rock Desert is one of the largest uh, continuously flat areas in, uh, in North America. Uh, 240-something square miles of absolute flatness. Wow. Nothing grows out there. There's not the slightest, tiniest weed. Uh, in this big, vast, open, uh, dry lake bed of alkali, uh, you know, desert lake bed, about the only thing you ever see that's alive out there is the occasional dragonfly or insect that's blown in by the winds. <laughs> Other than that, uh, nothing lives on that space. It's it's the most inhospitable patch you've ever seen, and this 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 uh, alkali lake bed generates a lot of dust, especially when there's movement of people and vehicles moving around. And dust storms out there reach biblical proportions. <clears throat> well, I heard uh, uh, of one time there was like a a lot of people on bicycles, and all of a sudden a dust pour storm kicked up, and they couldn't you couldn't even see them. <laughs> They had to con like hunker down to the dust storm left because they couldn't see. Oh, certainly. See. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of that's one of the challenges that people have out there is coping with that type of an, of an environment. Uh, uh, dust storms are, are pretty common. It gets very hot and it's very very dry. Uh, if if anybody is thinking, gee, I want to go out there, just realize that it is an extraordinarily physically challenging environement. <clears throat> well, uh, it sounded and, um, well. You got to have your water, and it is hot, and you need shade, so. And I heard, also we know about the, the dust storms now, mm -hmm. and then um, I just heard it's kind of, a, like you said, a city within itself where you come and you kind of meet everybody and just kind of walk around and enjoy kind of everyone's... Well, one of the things we like to, one of the old phrases we use is, no spectators. Everybody's a participant in one way. And I like to view the city as, Black Rock City is, is what we call it, uh, as a gigantic stage setting, at least it is for me. I like that. Uh, it's it's a marvelous environment. Um, this temporary community, people set up their camps. It's not just a place to live, but for many people, we create what are called theme camps, and it's a it, it's a it's a little environment that we create that has some kind of thematic presentation to it. Uh, it could be involved around some kind of activity or some kind of visual aspect. Uh, and we pour a lot of time and attention into creating these little environments. Some of them are absolutely spectacular. Uh, and you wonder, how in the world are, is the, was this transported out there to appear out there in this, this desert environment? It's absolutely spectacular. Oh, wow. And, the, uh, uh, and, and as time has, go, has, has gone on, where it became the social event for a lot of these creative people, uh, the art has really taken center stage. Uh, right behind the, the the community aspects, and hundreds of art pieces will be brought out there from all over the world. Some of these uh, pieces are monumental in size, wow. and some are absolutely tiny. Uh, and uh, these these works are brought up by the artists by their own effort uh, and by their their own you know sweat blood sweat and tears to create these things. Uh, and the goal too is to try to make a lot of these artworks as interactive as possible. So the person not only might emotionally or philosophically interact with it, but they might actually physically interact on it. They can go in on it. They can climb on it. They can move something. They can bang on it, make music with it. Oh, I like that. Uh, and, and so it, year after year after year I go and I say, I didn't get a chance to see everything because there's hundreds of these art pieces. Now imagine Black Rock City is this, is this semicircular city that's created in the middle of this flat expanse of white gypsum uh, dry lake bed. And it's about two miles across. Okay. From one side to the other. It has, con it has uh, radial streets that come along that are named after the faces of a clock, you know, from uh, 10 o'clock around to 2 o'clock. And then the radial streets are alphabetical A, B, C, and so forth. And they're thematically named every year. And in the center and spreading out for this, for a vast area is uh, is GPS located art pieces and installations. All right. Where you can you can have a map and you can go from one piece to another, and some of them are these impossible distances out away from the city, uh, requiring a long bicycle ride, 
Uh, or if you, you know, it, it is a pedestrian city, by yeah. the way. It's primarily okay. designed to be a pedestrian city. So once you get there, you're staying put. Once you bring your, your car, your vehicle, your truck in, you bring it into your camp, it's parked. Unless, unless you have a registered mutant vehicle. Uh, <laughs> mutant vehicles are what a lot of people in the outside world would call an art car. Uh, was uh, that your art vehicle? car in the parking lot, perchance? Uh, yeah, yes, I have an art car. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. But, but a mutant vehicle goes a little bit beyond that. A mutant vehicle is a rolling piece of sculpture. It's it's something that completely disguises the vehicle that's uh, that's inside, and it could be anything from, uh, you know, a, a a tiny little bathtub that the self-propelled bathtub, to something that's. Uh, well, there's been grand, gigantic structures out there that have been 60, 70 feet long that wow. uh, shoot fire and look like dragons or giant That'd be uh, beautiful. Pi- full-size pirate ships that float across the desert. Uh, magnificent structures in this almost Fellini-like uh, world uh, that's created in, out of Black Rock City. Well, when um, all these activities are going on, does, you, does it, this... Well, does it happen at night when it gets dusk, or is this a day-long thing? Or uh, Oh, yeah, 24 hours a day. It's, it's, uh, it, it is a 24-hour-a-day city. People are always, they have different kinds of events, performances, um, different kinds of participatory things, lectures, seminars, uh, games, uh, just fun things, too. This year, uh, some people created a thing they called the Wedge, which was a giant, gigantic slide. Oh. It was astroturfed, and you would get on these pieces of material and slide down it. Things just purely out of fun. Well, that sounds fun. Uh, and it could be something that goes to a very existential, very thoughtful kind of thing. Of course, the man structure that's in the center is sort of like the centerpiece. Uh, he's evolved from that figure that was once burned on a beach into this uh, very large this kind of central structure, which is... Uh, Sort of the social, which is kind of a social meeting place, and it's also mm-hmm. the place where people gather at the end of the event where the where the band so, figures burn. So, so the actual Burning Man is in the is in the middle of that little thing in, in the center center so, of the city plan. Yes. So, um, how do you build a Burning Man? Is it pallets, or do you just creativity things? It just happens, or it doesn't just happen. It's very very carefully right. planned out. the The organization has a group of crafts crafts people that work uh, throughout the year to prepare for the event. And they construct one, a Burning Man. Sometimes I think they've actually built spares in the event of a A backup Burning Man? Uh, But it's a beautiful structure. Uh, It's very beautifully engineered. At night, it's lit up with neon lights. All right. Uh, And it usually stands on a 40-foot platform. The man is about 40 feet tall, stands on some kind of a structure that often you can climb up into with platforms and balconies. And, uh, And then you can look across the whole span uh, of, of the city from... Uh, from See, I didn't have that point. clue. I didn't even know. Wonderful. All I remember is I heard someone said it, it, it burned by mistake one year, and I didn't get a chance to actually, wait. Actually, it didn't burn by mistake. It, it, just, was, uh, it was actually torched by somebody a little early. Oh. But uh, the crew quickly <laughs> was able to uh, uh, you know, assemble a, a, a replacement and get him back into place. I think it was by Thursday, and everything was uh, back on schedule. Well, it, it, it absolutely sounds like a perfect place that for an artist to, uh, to go. We're going to have to take a short break pretty soon. And uh, I really appreciate you coming out and telling yeah. me about Burning Man because um, all these things are just rumors I've been hearing. And now from what you're saying, it's, it's a pretty well thought out plan. And uh, the statue itself I hadn't seen. I hope you're showing it now in the background. There are a couple of photographs in the, yeah. in the, that are scrolling by over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, uh, thank you, Kubilak, and we'll be right back. Thank you. In order to protect our riding opportunities, we've got to tread lightly. That means staying on roads, trails, and areas designated for ATVs. Also, go over, not around trail obstacles to avoid widening trails. And cross rivers slowly, and only at places where the trail crosses the stream. Join the millions of responsible riders who protect our privileges and our natural resources by treading lightly in the outdoors. Visit Tread Lightly at treadlightly.org. My name is Christina Keegan, and I'm Miss Nevada. Every two minutes, another American is sexually assaulted. The attack may last just moments, but the effects can last a lifetime. I would know. Four years ago, I was sexually assaulted. But there is hope. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, you are not alone. Help is just a phone call away through the National Sexual Assault Hotline at the number on your screen. You can join the fight against sexual violence by volunteering in your community. Log on to rain.org to learn how. 
Hi, right, we're back and uh, with Killbuck. We're going to continue talking about uh, Burning Man. This is very fascinating. And uh, uh, one of the things we said at break, you're going to tell us about costumes. Sure. Um, yeah. This is kind of a weird rumor, but I heard sometimes people uh, uh, don't wear a whole lot of costumes. Well, you know, that is the one thing that you always hear about when people say, oh, you go to Burning Man, and they say, oh, well, that's that place where everybody runs around naked. Well, first of all, they don't always run around. They usually walk or sometimes ride bikes. Uh, but uh, although nudity is, is very accepted and very commonplace there, it's nowhere near the norm. Um, uh, first of all, sunburn is a little bit... Uh, bit of well, a problem. That's what I was thinking. But One, the, the sunburn. Uh, two, the like you said, the little particles flying around, and uh, yeah. And three, you know, it's it's not a negative to my mind, but it, it can get kind of weird if it's um, hot. You know. Well, it, but it's also kind of boring after yeah. you see, you know, you know, a, a few naked people. It's like, okay, well, I want to see something more interesting. Yeah, uh, I that's see, what we have here. <laughs> that, most people <laughs> like to express themselves with costuming, and the costuming out there. Uh, is uh, not only fun, uh, silly, and fantastic, some of it is absolutely extraordinary and elaborate. Uh, I, you know, I, I love making costumes. And one, oh, of the things okay. I like, one of the things I like to do is I like to make hats. Well, I love wearing costumes. And, so yeah, cool. costumes are wonderful because costumes are a way of sort of, you know, of you per putting on a new personality. Yeah. And you can uh, you can use costuming in in ways to, you know, enhance the theme that you're doing or just just to have yourself a good old time. Well, this is very and light. This yeah this this is a, a hat that's done in a kind of a genre style which was referred to as steampunk. Steampunk, I like and, that. And uh, this is a I call my high pressure top hat. And although it's made to look like it's made out of cast iron that's riveted together, it's actually made out of urethane foam, and it's very, very light. I was thinking it was heavy. When I felt it, it, yeah. went, it was squeezable. Yeah, it's very, it's very lightweight. Uh, this one here I made out of a uh, plastic Darth Vader helmet that I got at a uh, thrift store. <laughs> Uh, and it's just a fun sort of fantastical thing that might have been worn by a character in a Jules Verne novel. Um, and this one back here uh, is... That's awesome. This one also was made out of polyurethane foam. This is part of a robot costume. It's a full costume that I have. Looks it's like from the, Doctor Who. Yeah, do, head to toe. Uh, I've got the, this is the head, but it also has the body, the arms, the legs, and so forth. And uh, it's a wonderful, fun little costume. A friend of mine and I, we... Um, uh, his name is Damian Jansen, lives up in uh, Sparks. And in 2005, we started building things we call land puppets. And these are not costumes, necessarily. They are more like, uh, more like walking puppets. Uh, the first one we did was an actual representation of the Burning Man figure itself. Okay. And it stood about 12 feet high. And you wear it on a backpack. And uh, it stands... You, it, it, it stands through the backpack, stands up about 12 feet high, and we could manipulate the arms and the legs, and as you walk in a natural motion, it walks with you. Uh, at night, it's lit up with, uh, with blue electroluminescent wire, sometimes called L-wire. It looks like a, a thin wire cord that, uh, that glows like, uh, flexible too, that glows like neon, runs off batteries. And... Uh, Ma absolutely magnificent magical look as it walks around, especially at night. Oh, wow. Uh, the, the following year, we created a giant, um, uh, a giant green praying mantis that was uh, <laughs> also about 12, 13 feet high. Uh, and uh, so these, these are examples of some of the extent that we go through to create things that we take out and share with uh, the rest of the, the Well, that sounds the great. Same. So every year you, you challenge yourself to make it something artistic to uh, grab the attention? Like, cause Absolutely. Because these, like, these look like sure. you're wearing one per year, different one per sure. year. Sure, some of us are, are, are uh, you know, we, we try to come up with some two or three really spectacular costumes every single year. And it's not unusual for us to work weeks or even months on, on some of them. Uh, to prepare them for the event. Well, I would think so. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly uh, an easy thing. You just had, uh, you just, just ended a month ago, so now you're going to have uh, 11 months to come up with another idea to compete with those yeah, people you who know, have brilliant but, things done. But you know, we, we have an expression too. We call it the other 51 weeks. You know, Burning Man is one week out of the year. There's mm -hmm. 52 weeks in a year. The other 51 weeks are uh, ones in which we go out and share what we do with uh, with each other, but also with, with people that maybe aren't quite familiar with what we do. 
Uh, we participate annually with a lot of the events uh, in uh, of, of Art Town in July in Reno every year. Art Town's good. Uh, we put on our we put on and produce our own shows and events. Uh, we have a space theme party we do as a fundraiser in uh, Reno every year in April called Yuri's Night, named after Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. Wow, when's that coming up? Uh, that's usually around uh, the week, uh, a weekend closest to April 12th. I would love to go to that. And then every year we put on different events for ourselves and to participate with the public, which we call decompression events. And these generally take place sometime after uh, the Burning Man event. And we held ours in Reno on October, what was it, October 17th? Yes. Uh, and it attracted somewhere around 2,000 people. Wow. Uh, the events are held in San Francisco and other parts of the country. And in fact, Burning Man is actually becoming, for a lot of us, well, we mentioned this earlier before the show, uh, sort of like n- not necessarily the event itself anymore. It's becoming more like our annual convention uh, because we're taking aspects of, of our experiences and putting it into our everyday lives. And... The event is branched out and, and has um, like spin-offs, you might say. And these regional events, there's like one in Arizona that's called Toast. Toast? Uh, there's one up in the uh, Pacific Northwest, which is called Soak. Soak. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Hot, cold, Australia, wet. Australia, New Zealand, Russia, uh, Spain, uh, all over the world, uh, these events are taking place, and people are, are bringing the fun and the, uh, the idea of community and, and art and putting it together into their own regional events uh, in different parts of the country and all over the world. So these people come who are artists, take it back to Russia, and take the theme of Burning Man back with them. That's and right. And they're uh, showing people like me the, who don't know to know. And you're just sharing the artistry it, around the for, world. For some reason, uh, it, the event has become enormously popular with Russians. I've met so many Russians. Uh, over Russians the last are fun years. people. Yeah, <laughs> they're marvelous. Fun people. It's really, really surprising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think that's fantastic. I and mean, you said this is all over the world, and uh, and then you, you have your national in, in Nevada. Yeah, we kind of think of it, especially uh, for for a lot of us, think of it as sort of like the national convention. Uh, and uh, we, we, you know, we're kind of going into our, our, our quiet season now where a lot of the events and the spinoffs and other events that we're, we're doing uh, are, are quieting down. And so we're now beginning to uh, prepare for next year. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, it sounds like your yeah. level is pretty high, but, but why do most people attend? Are they um, uh, mm-hmm. like just starting to learn? Because your, your level is pretty high with the costumes and things, but your first time probably like me would just... Uh, you know, it's what I do and what my friends and the folks that I camp with do is is fairly pretty common. Um, it all, you, you get out of anything what you put into it. Okay, I agree with that. And uh, so, uh, you know, curiosity often is what brings us out there. We, we hear about this spectacle in the desert, and, uh, and, and it is. It is absolutely spectacular. And, and I wanted to see what is this thing all about. Uh, and my first year I, I spent, the first year I spent with my jaw dragging around most of the time in just absolute <laughs> awe of the effort and the time and the, the detail and the work and the love that people put into their camps and their artwork and, and, and the events that they put together. And uh, I came back and somebody asked me what, I, what it was like and I said, never in the wildest dreams of the Egyptian priests could they ever imagine something quite so grand. Well, that's, <laughs> just, see, that's been my problem. Uh, the, the one person I know who goes can't describe it. Yeah, it's, and it's like, I, I was a dying to know, and it's like... Well, uh, because it isn't one thing. Yeah, it, it can't it, be one thing. You know, it, you know, people will go out there for their own reasons. Um, and you know, a, a lot of people go because they hear, it's this big party out in the desert, you know. And they hear that anything goes and there's no rules. Well, first of all, uh, that's, you know, that second point is absolutely wrong. It, 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 it isn't an anything goes event and it isn't a place where there's no rules and there's no law. Uh, the same state and federal laws that apply right where we are right now apply out there as well. Uh, it, it's, it's no different uh, out there than it is here in Carson City or anywhere else. Uh, it, it is a place that has rules. Any community 
that is going to survive and function and develop has to have rules. And we do have rules. We have guidelines and we, we have principles that we operate off of. There's also very, very heavy law enforcement presence out there. Excellent. So to say that it's a lawless place is far Oh, I, I never heard that. Yeah. But what I did hear is that um, on your website, you pretty much have some guidelines and things. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been putting that up from time to time. And uh, so they can go to the website and kind of learn how to participate sure. and get tickets and then um, kind of get get involved. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, burningman.com is the official website. And uh, it, and that's where that's that's the best place for a person who's new or just or maybe just who's interested in finding what the event is like. There's an excellent excellent photo gallery with probably by now tens of thousands of photographs taken by participants and professional photographers. Uh, magnificent photographs. There are there's the survival guide uh, that lets you know. Gee, what do you need to know? What do you need to have? What do you need to do to be able to well, effectively? I think we should reiterate that 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 you need to have your right. have it together because you're out there. Definitely don't uh, don't go to even think about going unless you really are willing to put up with some extremely arduous conditions. Yeah, because I was thinking about going, but after talking to uh, Killbuck. My asthma would probably take me out of the game fast. Yeah, if, and if you have a respiratory problem, the dust can be a real severe yeah. problem. Um, and also, the, the, the amount of walking or cycling that's involved, it, the city is absolutely huge. So uh, you recommend probably bringing in a bike then? A, a, a bicycle is your best way yeah. of getting around in Black Rock City. Absolutely, definitely the best way. Uh, and it's the, the the least maintenance intensive, you know. Unless you want to build a meeting vehicle, and then you're 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 way into it. You're 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 beyond hope by that. Bring time. saddle bags so you can yeah, trade, trade for stuff. Yeah, by that time. Uh, but yeah, the 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 physical toll that it takes. Yeah, even on the back of the ticket when you get your ticket, it, there's a disclaimer on there. It basically it, one of the things in there is, is you know, you could die. You, you could die by, by going die of having there. a good time. So yeah. So <laughs> you know, this, you know, it, it isn't it isn't a a normal camping trip. Um, so the, the the website is excellent for learning about that, that about how to get tickets and how to get there and how to prepare uh, different ways different ways that people can participate. And it's a great little idea bank. And you can also find links in there to the various different theme camps uh, and their own websites that they have, and to see what people are doing and how they how they participate. And we encourage that we you know we really want that everything from the organization down to those of us who are just participants. We really want people to go out there not just to to see it, but to participate in it and be a part of it. Well, yeah, because it sounds like it's a living, breathing organism for uh, one week. And then, yeah, very then, much so. Then yeah. when you burn the man, and the next morning it just turns into a cleaning, leave nothing behind, right? Most most people tend to leave right after the uh, uh, the the burn that occurs on Saturday night. And by the way, this occurs on uh, uh, the week uh, running up to Labor Day weekend every year. Okay, in, in the early part of September, and uh, <coughs> most people tend to start moving on after that. However, for those who want to stay, there's another event which a lot of us find just, just as intriguing. That's what's called the Temple Burn. The Temple Burn. I didn't hear and about that. There's a structure that's designed by architects and artists every year that's referred to as the Temple. And the Temple is a place for, uh, uh, it, it's evolved into a place of remembrance for more oh. than anything else, of people who have died over the last year. And oh. people come there and they bring tokens and photographs and memorabilia and put it onto that structure. And then it's uh, in, a, in a very, uh, I, I would say, a, a very solemn, a very dignified way, on Sunday night, in absolute silence, the structure is burned. Well, I tell and you. The fascinating thing, too, that always happens every year is as that structure burns, these, these whirlwinds of fire and smoke begin marching off of the structure as it burns. Uh, it, almost like in this procession mm. that, that move off of it. Hundreds and hundreds yeah. of these tiny yeah. little smoky whirlwinds. Well, I'm sorry we have to say goodbye. Thank you very much, Kilbeck. Oh, hey. And I appreciate you for being on Burning, or tell me about Burning Man. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a great pleasure, and wish we had more time. But Thank you. All right.